Hello everyone, the friendly neighborhood gaming weasel back at it again with another video. The Freydos, the third and final evolving weapon inside of Warframe added with the Angels of Zeremon update. It is a Tonefuss weapon and of course it can be purchased at I think the yes the fourth rank inside of the uh, standing of course Zeremon standing and it is purchased from Caval Cavalier and let me just show you what the upgrade tree looks like. So right here, let's go to the first one. This one, of course, will unlock uh, the incarnate form, which the increases your uh, attack speed and your range as well. Uh, doing reaching a combo counter of five and uh, then doing a heavy attack will uh, unlock or activate the incarnate form. So, moving on to the second one, of course, 100 kills to get this. Uh, then, performing the uh, incarnate form, I guess, use or kill. Uh, six times is gonna give you the second one, so this will unlock the second evolution. You have slam radius, attack speed, and uh, sprint speed plus slide. I chose attack speed, of course, always good. Then, uh, I actually forgot this one. I completely forgot what this one is. Uh, I'll, I'll have to be honest. Uh, initial combo adept reflexes, initial combo is always, always good. Uh, or for each enemy hit by slam radius, gain four combo count. You can also use this and make a quite interesting build with this one as well. The evolution four. Now, this is uh, doing 12, completing 12 floods or closing 12 floods in the void flood mission. I uh, chose reach uh, a combo counter of three and then do a heavy attack to activate the incarnate form. We have Porker Velocity and Increased Double Jump Strength. You don't honestly need these two. They're quite useless in my opinion. Uh, but this one is very, very good. And then the final one, 100% uh, Heavy Attack Wind-Up Speed. You have Heavy Attack Efficiency for 30 seconds and Collecting Ammo Grants 5 Melee Combo Counter. This one could be good as well. This one could be actually very, very good. So uh, you can definitely test this one out. I personally chose Heavy Attack Wind-Up Speed because I love doing those heavy attacks. They... they do more damage uh, in the sense that your DPS uh, is much bigger because you're gonna have heavy attack anyway to incard, uh, activate the incarnate form. In the gameplay, I or I guess in the uh, simulacrum, I do activate it or deactivate it multiple times. So keep that in mind. I was kind of um, you know strange out there. I completely lost focus. That I if you activate it, then you can deactivate it and so on and so forth. Uh, but yeah, collecting ammo uh, grants five melee combo cups could be pretty good as well. So. There you go, that's the evolution. Moving on to the simulacrum. Oh, the Fredos, Predos, Alfredos inside of, of course, the simulacrum. Now, the build looks something like this Sovereign Outcast as our stance, condition overload, of course, blood rush, uh, voltaic strike, and fever strike. We'll explain why we have corrosive in just a second. We have organ shatter for critical damage, berserker fury. Drifting contact and more electricity damage. Now you could try out as well. Might be quite interesting to use heavy blow or killing blow. Sorry, on this uh, build instead of shocking touch for extra 120% melee uh, or heavy attack damage and 60% less wind up speed. Could be quite quite good. Or maybe gladiator might if you uh, want to. Uh, maybe even remove uh, remove Berserker Fury as well, uh, if you want to do that. Uh, but honestly, I love the build as it is right now. And of course, we're going to be comparing it to the Cronin Prime. And I have to say, it is maybe just a tad bit better than Cronin Prime, but we'll get into that in just a second. And we have, of course, Kuvanukor with Radiation and Viral. I don't have any other ones because uh, my Kuvanukor is quite bad at the moment. So... Of course, how this works, supply status effects on the enemies, and then strike because of my evolution tree. My incarnate mode could be activated much, much faster than before. Instead of five, I need around three combo chance. And of course, the incarnate form increases attack speed and also increases range. Now, I do need to apply status effects quite frequently because, of course, Viral is great with Slash, if you did not know. And my heavy attacks do an incredible amount of damage. I'm uh, sometimes even surprised by how much damage they actually do. And of course, Corrosive is great at removing armor. Because of the high status that I have on this weapon, that is quite easy to do. And I'll just kill this one guy, and there you go. 
So, as you saw there, pretty, pretty good and proficient weapon. The range and attack speed uh, gain from the uh, incarnate form is very, very good, believe me. So, let me just simulate that again. Of course, you could use the Cedo as well, but then uh, you're going to switch Corrosive uh, for Viral because Viral is not guaranteed with the Cedo. Basically, it's going to apply more status effects, but uh, uh, you have to keep in mind that Viral is not guaranteed. Now, if my Kuva Nucor, for example, had even Heat on, that would be much, much better because, of course, then my Condition Overload would be much, much better. Because, of course, the more status effects affecting the target, the more damage we actually do. Now, keep in mind that uh, activating your Incarnate Form multiple times is not going to increase your attack speed multiple times. So, always keep that in mind. Now, let me show you what my Proven Prime can do. It is the exact same build, nothing changed out, as you can see right here. Exactly the same as uh, on the... What's it called? Again, I forgot, completely forgot, the Predos. Uh, and uh, let's go test it out. Now, you're gonna see that the extra range that you gain from the Incarnate Form and the extra attack speed is quite noticeable. The attack speed, not so much. Uh, the range, yes, of course, that could be completely nullified by uh, Primed Reach or Ordinary Reach. But, of course, that does take up one mod slot and, for example, Picking out Shocking Touch will give you less Corrosive uh, than would be honestly needed because more Corrosive means more, of course, damage and more, uh, of course, removal. So, as you can see, the Chrome Prime still is one of the best weapons inside of the game. Uh, Stats-wise, the Chrome Prime basically has everything above uh, the Fredo. So, let me just compare it right here. As you can see... Alfredo has basically worse, la uh, worse stats for everything compared uh, to the Chrono Prime. Uh, would I say they are on par? Maybe, maybe a little bit, yes. Uh, but in my opinion, uh, the Chrono Prime is still better maybe damage-wise. But I guess a bigger crowd of enemies could be easily dispatched with both of them, of course. Uh, but the Predo, or Predos, whatever you want to call it, I completely mess up the name is maybe just a tad bit better. But two great weapons, I mean, the Chrono Prime and the Predos, so definitely would recommend you pick them up. So this has been the Predos, uh, the evolution and everything. Hope you guys enjoyed. If you guys did, leave a like, a comment, and do subscribe for more. And I'll see you guys on the next one. The Gaming Weasel, over and out.